If you liked my Year of the Rat Yin Yang design, or you watched my Red Bubble tutorial, and you're curious about how I take a pen and ink design like this and turn it into a smooth digital file for printing, stay tuned to the end. I'm going to demonstrate what I did on today's Year of the Tiger Yin Yang design in Photoshop to clean it up and get it ready. Hello, and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. It's the third Friday of the month, and that means it's time for another Art Addicts Alliance group upload day. Last month, you voted along with us to help us pick our next theme, and the theme this month is Endangered Animals. If you want to help pick next month's theme, check out the poll linked in the description and pinned comment below within the first week. We've already been voting and sharing it around, but we'll keep the poll open for a bit longer in case these videos are the first you're hearing of it. What is the Art Addicts Alliance? Well, we're a group of art channels here on YouTube who get together on a monthly basis to upload collaborative pieces on a pre-selected theme on the third Friday of every month. Our current members, besides myself, are Jazz Capri, Weblight Dreams, Pan Dimensional Space Zombie, All Funnies and Games, Kimber Kiwi Art, Aloria's Art World, The Lori Files, Color Nix, Jen's Wild About Art, and Aloria's Art. We also have a featured artist guesting with us this month, and that's Stevie Biffin. All of those channels are linked in the description and pinned comment down below, so definitely check them out if you haven't already. If you're here right when my video goes live, then chances are half have already posted and half haven't. <laughs> it seems like we're pretty evenly split between North America and the rest of the world, and being in Newfoundland, that puts me in the median time zone. So, as I just mentioned, our theme this month is endangered animals. I was actually going to present a completely different piece, but it was taking too long. That piece definitely deserves all the time it's going to take to finish it properly, so I'll just slot it into my schedule further down the line when it's done. You really seemed to like my Year of the Rat Yin Yang design last month. I asked if I should do a series with the rest of the Chinese Zodiac as Yin Yang designs, and you said yes. Next in the sequence would be Ox, and I have already sketched out that design, but given the theme we're working with today, I decided to skip ahead and do Year of the Tiger, and we can go back to Ox next time. Let me know if you want to see the actual sketching and design process filmed for a future installment in this series. If that gets a big yes, I'll try to film some of the remaining nine I haven't designed yet completely from scratch, rather than starting at this point, where I've transferred the plan design over to my final paper. I'm working in Micron pens, though I briefly considered a Marabou brush pen near the beginning, and the surface is my Hannemule Nostalgie sketchbook from the Jazzy Art Box. Last time I used a loose sheet of Bristol board, and Nostalgie paper feels similar to me, so I wanted to try it out for this type of work and see how it performed. I found there was a little bit of pilling in a couple spots, but that was absolutely my fault, doing too much of a scrubbing action with a very small nib. Once again, I'm impressed with this sketchbook. You may notice that I put a bunch of random dots down as I was thickening up the line work in preparation for filling in the black parts. Those were a reminder to myself of which sections are meant to be filled in. You'll also notice as we go along that there are a few spots where I left white gaps for negative space differentiation, and they feel like an afterthought because they're interrupted by previously drawn lines. If I wanted to produce this design larger and with materials that would be suitable to sell the original, I would probably take it through a couple more rounds of planning to really iron out those finer details. But since I only intend to print this from a digitally retouched file, small things like that are fine. At the end of the traditional art portion, you'll see me whiting out some of those extra lines with a gel pen. In person, you're still going to see the black ink ghosting through, but it covers it enough that we can easily force Photoshop or similar software to treat those spots the same as the naked white of the page. Another thing I would keep in mind and try to work on more carefully if I were planning to sell the original would be creating flatter black areas. 
I'm not being consistent with the type or direction of my pen strokes, and you can see that in person if you really inspect this piece. I honestly wouldn't do it with pen if I wanted to sell it though. I would break out a nice black ink that dries fairly flat, like Sumi ink, and apply it with a brush. And I probably would have picked more of a watercolor type paper to really accept that ink as evenly as possible and decrease the risk of smudging. When you use ink on a smooth paper like this, even a quick drying permanent liner pen like this, the ink is going to sit on top of the page a little longer, so it's easy to smudge your work by mistake if you aren't careful where you're putting your hand as you go along. I feel like I should talk a little bit about the symbolism of this design and about the Art Addicts Alliance theme a little more, so let's do that while you watch me fill in all the black parts. If you're really not interested, I won't be offended if you mute or skip, but don't forget I am taking this into Photoshop after I'm done with the pen and paper portion. By the way, if you're new here, I'd love it if you would subscribe and turn on notifications. I upload twice a week at minimum, every Tuesday and Thursday, and what I'm doing here is documenting my journey turning my art hobby into a work-from-home career and sharing everything I learn along the way with you. It really wouldn't be quite as much fun without this community we're building, so thank you so much for joining me. I love hearing from you in the comments. Alright, design topic, collab theme. <laughs> the tiger is the third animal in the Chinese zodiac after the ox. The last year of the tiger was 2011, and the next year of the tiger will be 2023. People born in the year of the tiger are most compatible with fellow tigers, as well as people born in the years of the horse and dog, and they are least compatible with people born in the year of the monkey. All Chinese zodiac animals are associated with either yin or yang, and the tiger is yang. The lucky flower for the tiger is the cineraria, which are a genus of plants in the sunflower family. Don't be fooled into thinking that means they're all yellow, though, because they aren't. Different types of cineraria can be just as colorful as pansies. On the topic of colors, tigers are drawn to white, gray, blue, purple, and orange as their lucky colors, but are advised to avoid gold, silver, brown, and black. Their lucky numbers are 0, 1, 3, and 4, and they should avoid 6, 7, and 8. I find that particularly interesting because 8 is pretty much a universally lucky number in East Asian cultures. I guess that means tigers don't blend in with the crowd. All Chinese zodiac animals are associated with a season, and tigers are spring. I believe that's to do with the lunar month the tiger is paired with, the first lunar month. If you recall from my Year of the Rat video, I ran through how you actually have four animals under the Chinese zodiac system. The animal assigned based on your year of birth is your outer animal. This represents how you present yourself to the world and how others perceive you. Your inner animal is assigned based on the lunar month you were born in, and this represents who you wish to be. Your true animal is assigned based on the day of the week you were born, though this one is more variable. Some days have multiple possible animals, and some animals are repeated. Tiger is only an option for Saturday along with the ox. Your secret animal is assigned based on the time of day you were born, and this is who you truly are deep inside even if outer forces are preventing you from realizing it. The tiger falls into the third trine with its most compatible partners, the horse and the dog. Tiger needs horse, horse needs dog, dog needs tiger. These individuals are idealistic, independent, impulsive, honorable, loyal, and protective. They're great humanitarians and known to seek out true love. They can be rash, stubborn, rebellious, and anxious. Secret tigers are born between the hours of 3 and 5 in the morning, as this is when tigers are known to hunt their prey. In terms of the real-world animal tiger, all species of tiger are either currently endangered or already extinct. Not every species called tiger that has ever existed was a member of the same taxonomical family. Generally, when we say tiger, we're talking about the big striped wildcats, family Felidae, subfamily Pantherine, genus Panthera, subspecies Panthera tigris. Notable extinct animals called tiger that 
don't fit are the saber-toothed tiger and the Tasmanian tiger. Smilodon, the saber-toothed tiger, was a genus of prehistoric big cats from North and South America that includes three species, all of which had the namesake enlarged canine teeth. Fossils can't give us any indication of what their coat looked like, but traditionally these cats aren't depicted as being striped, despite the tiger aspect of their name. Spotted or even solid brown, like cougars, is more likely. The thylacine, or Tasmanian tiger, wasn't even feline. It was sometimes called the Tasmanian tiger because of its primitive striped pattern on its lower back and tail, but it was also called the Tasmanian wolf due to its overall canine-like visual characteristics. Despite all this, it was actually a large marsupial. The last known thylacine was captured in 1933 and lived at the Horbat Zoo for three years. Popular rumor is that the animal's name was Benjamin, though the person who spoke to the media claiming to have been an employee of the zoo at the time and gave this name never actually worked for the zoo. The species was endangered in Australia and New Zealand for many years at this point, but the New Zealand government didn't officially declare it a protected species until 59 days after the last known captive thylacine had died. But back to actual tigers. And by actual tigers, of course, I mean the large striped cats of Asia. They are the largest member of the Felidae family and therefore also the largest member of genus Panthera. At the start of the 20th century, there were over 100,000 wild tigers in the world. Five years ago, in 2015, that number had decreased to just 3 to 4,000 individuals across all surviving subspecies. Subspecies of tigers can be grouped into two categories, the northern clade, which includes the Siberian and Caspian tigers, and the southern clade, which is basically everything else. Everything else refers to the Bengal tiger, the South China tiger, the Indo-Chinese tiger, the Malayan tiger, the Java tiger, the Bali tiger, and the Sumatran tiger. The Caspian, Javan, and Bali tiger subspecies are all extinct or believed to be extinct. Tigers have crossbred with lions in captivity, resulting in a liger from a male lion and a female tiger, or a tigon from a lioness and a male tiger. Tiger hybrids have not been observed in the wild. Of course, lions and tigers do not share natural territories, though there are other members of genus Panthera in Asia. White tigers are white because they lack pheomelanin, which is the natural pigment that causes the orange and brown shades in most tigers' coats. They also tend to have dark brown stripes rather than black and blue eyes. This is known to be a recessive trait and not a form of albinism. Tiger breeding programs in captivity condemn the breeding of white tigers today, as most of the world's captive white tigers come from intentional breeding for color by individuals who were not careful to avoid excessive inbreeding and did not keep subspecies separated. Most captive white tigers are thus impure and genetically very similar to one another. Two white tiger morphs resulting from genetic mutations are the snow white and golden tigers. These do occur in the wild, though they are extremely rare. Snow white tigers have fairly faint reddish markings on white coats, and golden tigers have mid-toned reddish markings on a blonde coat. Like most endangered species, their decline is due to human activity. It's a combination of habitat destruction and overhunting. Tigers are hunted for sport, for human and livestock preservation, and for the value of their pelts and bones. Their pelts are valuable in the fur trade due to the distinctive color and patterns, and their bones have been used for centuries in Chinese medicine though both of these uses are condemned by much of the world and has decreased significantly in modern times as preservation efforts grow. And with that, I think it's time we switch gears and talk about how I'm going to edit this design for printing. If you're still here, thanks so much for sticking around, or at the very least, jumping ahead to this point and not abandoning me. <laughs> I appreciate it. I just want to remind you that I am planning to hold an international giveaway when I qualify for the YouTube Partner Program, so if you'd like to subscribe and help me get there sooner by watching all the way through, that's very much appreciated.
I've scanned my pen drawing at the highest setting on my flatbed scanner and brought the file into Photoshop. You certainly don't have to use Photoshop, any editing software will do, and it doesn't even have to be particularly new. This is the version of Photoshop included in the Creative Suite 5.5 package, which was the second last version before Adobe moved to the subscription model. So. I don't have access to some of the newer features in Photoshop these days, but I do own a physical disk of this software and I'm not paying monthly to use it. GIMP and Pixlr are two excellent alternatives to Photoshop if you're just looking to manipulate scans of your traditional artwork. If you're considering doing digital art, some other great free and affordable programs are Autodesk Sketchbook, Medibang Paint Pro, Krita, and Paint Tool Sci. The first thing you want to do is make your scanned image as close to flat black and white as possible without losing detail. I'm doing this by hyping up the contrast and then using the eyedropper tool to select samples of black and white in levels. Once I've done that and merged the effect down onto my scan layer, I need to isolate just the black parts of the design. We'll fill the inner white areas back in later, but for now we want to essentially lift the ink parts so that we can flatten it and get rid of any visible pen strokes or missed spots. I'm using a combination of the magic wand selection tool and the basic lasso. I'm working on a PC running Windows, so the keyboard shortcuts I'm using to add and subtract from my selection is Ctrl plus Shift for add and Ctrl plus Alt for subtract. Selecting the white and areas you want to change to white is the easiest in this case, but that means you'll have everything you don't want to keep selected when you're done. So go ahead and invert the selection if you want to copy it to a new layer, or just cut what you've got selected if you're not preserving the white on this layer. Once you have your cutout black and it looks okay, use Layer Styles Color Overlay to make it a solid color. This covers all the pen strokes and miss spots and makes it look much cleaner. Now we need to add some white back in. I'm going to use a combination of the poly lasso and the magnetic lasso to select around the design. Then I'll fill it all in white on a layer below the black to avoid gaps and merge them together. If you want the option of a white edge or stroke, apply a stroke layer style to the final merged layer. In this case, I've gone for a 35 pixel white stroke, since this is actually a huge file. If you watched my Redbubble tutorial, you'll know it's best to leave the file as large as possible for printing, but if you want to upload this version of the design to your blog or social media feeds, resize it a lot smaller. You'll get a much more manageable file size that way, and the quality will be too low for someone to easily scale it back up to an appropriate size for merch printing. I'm going to cheat and grab my signature off of the Year of the Rat design, but you could lift your signature off the scan and clean it up the same way, or you could sign your piece digitally. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the other Art Addicts Alliance members videos if you haven't already, and if you have, here's a few other viewing suggestions for you on the left of the screen. Subscribe and I'll see you again with a brand new video on Tuesday. Bye guys!